Welcome to another episode of Paul Pamela Life. And welcome to the Breakers. Built by premier American architect Richard Morris Hunt, the Breakers is the grandest of Newport's summer cottages. The house stands as a symbol of the Vanderbilt's family social and financial power in the 19th and early 20th century America, a period known as the Gilded Age, when the nation became a world economic power. In the dining room, the Vanderbilts were surrounded by imagery of the harvest, looking around to see fruits and vegetables plentifully adorn the walls. The twelve rose-colored stone columns are solid alabaster, and draw your eyes upward to the painting of the goddess Aurora, heralding the dawn. The massive chandeliers and wall sconces in the imperial design are made of French Baccarat crystal and were piped for gas and wired for electricity at the time the house was built. The crown-shaped tops indicate the style, while the rings on the chains were used to adjust the flow of gas. This is the billiard room, designed by the Breakers architect, Richard Morris Hunt, continues the house's Italian motif. The Renaissance style furnishings are made from luxurious Santo Domingo mahogany. On the mosaic floor, notice the acorn motif. Acorns are the symbol of the Vanderbilt family and appear throughout the house's decor. This Roman bath inspired room is lined with Cipollini marble and alabaster with inset semi precious stones in the shape of a billiard cue. The huge light fixture over the billiard table is made of wrought iron and bronze and is actually attached to the structural beams of the house because of its weight. This is the morning room. Classical mythology and allegories decorate this room, from the painted allegory of the four seasons on the ceiling to the muses who appear in the corners of the room, painted on platinum leaf. The wall paneling was designed by Richard van der Boyen, who carved elaborate garlands and figures in the late Renaissance style.
The room also displays portraits of the Vanderbilt family. The music room, designed by Richard Vanderboyen and Allard and Sons, reflects the French Baroque interior the Vanderbilts would have seen in places like the Paris Opera House and was a setting for family weddings and debutante parties. silver leaf, blue-gray camp and marble from France, mirrors, and crystal light fixtures combine to make a glittering effect for evening concerts and receptions. This room and furnishings were also designed in France, then shipped to this location for installation here. The spirit of music and great composers are celebrated in the ceiling paintings. In the library room, the coffered ceiling is decorated with dolphin motif, an ancient symbol of hospitality in the sea. The central focus of the room is the 16th century fireplace and chimney piece, which was brought to the breakers from the Chateau d'Arny, Le Duc, in Burgundy, France. The Circassian walnut paneling is carved in a Renaissance style featuring acanthus vines, urns, and classical figures. Mr. Vanderbilt's bedroom is decorated in the Louis XIV style manner with carved walnut furnishings. Cornelius Vanderbilt II summered at this cottage for only four seasons. In 1896, he suffered a stroke and died of a second stroke in 1899 at age 56. With his brothers, he founded the Vanderbilt Clinic at Columbia University. After his death, Alice Vanderbilt funded construction of a wing at Newport Hospital, and their son Alfred built the YMCA of Newport in his father's memory. The marble bathtub has faucets for hot and cold, fresh and salt water. Mrs. Vanderbilt's bedroom is decorated in the Louis XVI style. She was born in Cincinnati, Ohio and had Newport roots. She was descended from the Ward and Flag families who were prominent merchants and political leaders in 18th century Newport. Miss Gertrude Vanderbilt was the fourth of Mr. and Mrs. Vanderbilt's seven children. Throughout her bedroom, there are pictures and portraits of Gertrude and representations of her artwork. She became a noted sculptor and an important art patron. 
Gertrude married Harry Payne Whitney in the Breakers Music Room in 1896. In early 1931, she founded the Whitney Museum of American Art in New York City to promote and honor works by American artists. The Great Hall is the largest room in this house, measuring approximately 50 feet wide by 50 feet long by 50 feet tall. Notice the ceiling is painted to look like the sky, which along with large doors that open to ocean breezes, evoke the feeling that you are outside. Countess Seicheni was born Gladys Vanderbilt, the youngest of Cornelius and Alice's children. In 1908, Gladys married Count Laszlo Seicheni, a member of Hungary's premier aristocratic family and a minister to the court of St. James in London, and later to the United States. When her mother Alice passed away in 1934, Countess Seicheni inherited the breakers. The upper loggia was originally used as a semi-outdoor sitting room and was filled with wicker furniture, potted palms, and rugs. The ceiling, a continuation of the painted sky from the Great Hall, was painted to represent three canopies stretched across a cloudy sky, and the surrounding frame was painted to look like marble. As you look out toward the ocean, you can see the cliff walk that runs along the edge of the property. 30 feet below, the sound of waves breaking against the cliffs gives the breakers its name. This guest bedroom shows Ogden Codman's new approach to design in the 1890s. He advocated the use of 18th century French decoration and light colors. The green wall panels are neoclassical in style and emulate a typical late 18th century French interior. In the gallery is a large scale reproduction of the tapestry that has been in place at the Breakers since it was completed in 1895. The 17th century Dutch tapestry by Carl van Mander tells a story from the life of Alexander the Great. The tapestry is currently undergoing conservation in Belgium. Upon its return, the tapestry will be hung in its original place. Beneath the tapestry is a portrait of Mrs. Vanderbilt by the Spanish artist Madrazo. The colorful skylight above is by the noted American stained glass artist, John Lafarge, and was originally made for the Vanderbilt's house on Fifth Avenue in New York City. Something that is amazing about this place is everywhere we go, the details Every little thing has a little detail to it. The marbles that they use. Look at this. Amazing. You turn around over here. Just filled with details. The kitchen was placed in a separate wing to prevent the potential spread of fire, cooking odors, and noise into the main house. 
the French-style cast iron stove was heated by coal and wood. The center work table is covered with zinc and the copper pots and pans are late 19th century pieces donated to the house. So we're outside, that and we're going to be getting some uh, something from the holiday menu. I decided to do the cider and bourbon. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Hot chocolate with what? Bailey's? Mm. Only at the breakers. Pamela, cheers. <laughs> landscape designer and civil engineer Ernest Bowditch designed the 13.1 acre landscape over the course of 20 years. Looking in Santa's workshop. <laughs> what a great way to end an unforgettable experience. Beautiful ground. If you would like to continue the journey with us, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss our content. If you would like more information about the breakers, check our links in the description down below.